DJ Trello podcast. Oh man, I'm slacking today. Let me see what I can do as far as my intro music. Okay, see, I did that one. Let me try this one. See if y'all like this. this being like two weeks ago For that DJ, that was kind of mellow beat, kind of mellow intro, but uh, hell, I had to, you know, sample a beat. Okay, DJ Trello podcast. It's 420, 420. You know what day it is, 420. You know, all the buzz smokers out there, I don't smoke no more. I got asthma and shit, I don't smoke nothing. No weed, no cigarettes, no black and miles, no pipes. I'd be too windy, man. Like these people that do these podcasts, I know they non-smokers too, because you gotta talk for a long ass time unless you're gonna like take a little pause, like stop the recording, then pick up later. I thought about that because sometimes, man, my voice be hoarse, and later on at night, I'd be like tired of talking. I'm I'm smoked so much in my life and polluted my lungs that I can't even have like chicks be calling me on the phone. I don't even want to talk, man, just because it's not because I'm into texting. It's because it shit starts to hurt my lungs after a while, man. <laughs> I be trying to keep my conversation short. You know what I'm saying? I mean, most of the time when chicks call you on the phone, it's just like either they're going to listen to your problems or you're going to listen to theirs. You know, if, it, if the conversation gets long, it's just all venting. You know what I'm saying? It's all like, oh, how was your day? Da, da, da. This is going on with this chick, and she pissed me off. She said this and that, and I don't like this chick at work. And chicks don't get, like, they need they need a guy's perspective, just like we need a woman's perspective. Because, like, guy's perspective, man, we see everything in reality. Like, you know, chicks will sit up there and think guys are friends. Really? Look, I told, I told all these chicks, man, there's either guys that want to have sex with you, or there's guys that, you know, are associates and don't even barely talk to you. That's it. There ain't no friends. <laughs> but, I mean, they might be some friends out there. I might be too judgmental. But most of the time, all these guys, you know, they want to be there. They want to be the friend that, you know, you can go and vent about your female problems to and a shoulder to cry on. And all the time, they're thinking, man, it's just one of these days. One of these days, she's going to come around and give me the goods. You know what I'm saying? And chicks don't get that. Like, they'll never get that. You can explain that to them. And you can see the angle the dude's playing. Because we dudes. You know what I'm saying? But they'll never see it. Like, you know, you can uh, uh, you can, you can really see how the guy's trying to win his way in there. And you might be the boyfriend. And she might be like, oh, he's just a friend I talk to. You're like, yeah, whatever. You know, uh, talk costs money. Go to the therapist. They ain't, they ain't for free. So, obviously... It's an investment for the guy. He's talking to you the whole time thinking, okay, wait till the boyfriend messes up. I'm going to slide off in there. There's going to be a time when they get in a big fight and she's going to come crying over. Uh, he did this. He did that. And, you know, telling all our, their business to me. And I'll just, you know, go on and scoot over to this couch to this chick and da, da, da. But chicks, man, they tell you a lot. On the other other hand, I'm sorry. On the other hand, chicks help guys with kids, like, because, you know, they're mother, motherly and they can see things that, that guys don't normally see. They can see things like about guys' houses, about cleaning, about, you know, opening the windows to let the sun come in, about uh, what looks good on a guy that day. You know, his, his clothes, how he uh, his appearance is. They have this thing where they can see your your glow or your aura or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, guys don't pay attention to that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and then, you know, they have this thing about keeping things in order. You know what I'm saying? Keeping keeping things in, uh, 
you know, organize, kind of help you find things when you lose them. You know, their mind works like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying chicks can benefit guys just like guys can benefit chicks. But it's just funny how like chicks always think. Like I'll give you another example, man. I'll give you another example. Like a guy, when we go out, we got one thing on our mind. We ain't going out there to have a good time. We ain't going out there to get out the house. We going out there to get some booty. So when we in the club, we have an objective. Like we ain't gonna go talk to one chick, another chick, next chick. We have an objective to get some ass. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, strike, well, strike out there, strike out there, strike out there. You know what I'm saying? We just gonna keep on trying. You know what I'm saying? And the conversation, you know, chicks know, chicks are kind of aware of this because, like, if you go to a club and you conversating with a female and you sitting up there digging at her, like, hey, you know, what's up? You know, I mean, are you single? Da da da. You know, uh, what's up? Can I get to know you? Maybe you know we can, uh, you know, go to the house later, something, you know, or you can give me your number. We can hang out, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And you start digging like that, and they just kind of avoid the question like well you know uh you know and then just want to keep conversating because they know they know as soon as they answer that question and if it's a negative that's the end of the conversation i mean you can you can keep on talking to be kind of nice if you're a guy but mostly they know i mean chicks aren't dumb they know as soon as you, you they say well you know i got a boyfriend and i'm just out here you know with a couple of my friends having some fun you know that's the thing about chicks they go out for a whole different reason like i had to figure that shit out myself because i'm like why the fuck you in the club man you know what i'm saying if you're in a club you're not trying to hook up with somebody why are you even here you know go home but see chicks go out for a whole different reason than dudes chicks go out to the club to have a good time to get out the house to get away from their kids or you know they like to dance you know they let it let out let out all their frustrations when they dance so they go out for that reason like they can have a, a boyfriend a uh, husband whatever sitting at home watching the kids watching sports something like that you know what i'm saying that's the reason they go out like i would never in my life do that like if i had a fine chick or a, a wife you know at the house and um, all of a sudden one night I'd just be like, hey, honey, I want to go out and have some fun with my boys. You know what I'm saying? Not to the dance club. You know what I'm saying? Not like, see, guys, we go out to stuff like where there's there's some competition and sports involved. Like we'll say, hey, we'll go bowling or we'll go shoot some pool or um, we'll go uh, play golf or some shit you know some something where there's like a game with some competition between our boys we're not gonna go out to the dance club what the fuck for just to have fun just to get out the house no we're at the dance club to get some booty so that's our whole objective we're in there to get a, a girlfriend to come home that night you know what i'm saying and, and chicks kind of know that, but they just try to, like I said, you go up to them and you'd be having a cold conversation. You'd be thinking, damn, this girl's so fine, man. I wish I could just ooh, eat her alive, man. Look at that booty. And they'd be looking so good. They'd be all dressed up like sexy, sexy. You know what I'm saying? Like they trying to catch a man up in there. You know what I'm saying? And they got a, they got a husband at home. You know, and then they give you that that line. Oh, I'm just out here to have a good time with my homegirls. Me and my homegirls came down here. Da, da, da. You're like, what? the fuck are you doing in here especially looking like that you know what i'm saying i mean take your ass to your husband and and go home you know or go to uh what go to the to the uh what's it called i don't know what chicks do for fun now, some of them play golf some of them bowl too go to bowling alley you know what i'm saying don't come to the dance club but then they'd be like well i like to dance so like okay whatever so it's like that man it's really it's really really weird <laughs> i'm telling you it's really weird you know what else that pisses me off man i got an iphone right and um every time you go in the house to charge your phone you're going to charge your phone you know what i'm saying when you go in the house i don't know anybody that don't just oh, i'm not going to charge my phone in the house but most of the time whenever you hook your iphone up to a charger in the house you know uh then you go back out to your car and get in your car it's going to reset your your phone to that first a song every time you plug your phone in so you know you're going to work or whatever going to the store and you got to hear the same freaking a song on your list 
That shit is annoying, man. iPhone, I, Apple needs to really fix that shit. I don't know if they did with the new iPhone 10, but that shit be pissing me off, man. Like, I'm tired of hearing the first A song. Like, sometimes I took off albums off my uh, uh, collection on my phone just because I don't want to hear that fucking song every time I get in the car. You know what I'm saying? Now I open my phone up, either got to push shuffle. And for some reason with my shuffle, man, I always pick the songs I don't want to hear. It never, you know, even if I push like on these songs that are favorite songs, it never even picks some. It never does. It always picks some bullshit song. I'm like, damn, why the hell did I put that on my phone? Oh, yeah, that's albums. Pretty dope. But that song is trash. And it's always picking songs. And it's never, you know, and it always, it always tends to pick the same shuffle. Like, it never picks, like, the same damn songs or the same damn, uh, albums that you don't really want to um songs you don't want to listen to so I don't, I don't know i don't know apple needs you know what i'm saying and then they got this new samsung galaxy 10 i seen a commercial for that yesterday oh lord really share power really <laughs> you talking about have you ever seen anybody share stuff with total strangers samsung in your life uh, do you go into like a restaurant and a dude be like, hey, man, I got this appetizers. I don't really feel like eating it. Why don't y'all have some? Why don't you take this appetizer? Goes to another table. Says, hey, man, here's my appetizer right here. I didn't even touch it. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't really want it. Here you go. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen in real life. That's not real life. Or like, hey, I bought like three of these beers. I'm only going to drink one. Why don't you have one of my beers? Doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know where Samsung gets these studies. Like we're going to share power. That's never going to happen. And then on top of it, you, I think you have to both have a Galaxy 10 for it to share. So you have to find a random person out there in, out there in the world, like at the, at the bar and be like, Hey man, you got that 10, right? You got that 10. Hey, let me get some of that power, homeboy. Let me get some of that. I need to charge my battery. <laughs> That's the dumbest shit I ever heard, man. Samsung's usually smart about uh, uh, competing with iPhone and coming up with like new concepts and shit. But that was the dumbest shit I ever seen. That's just, you know, if anybody buys a phone, I guarantee you, you're not going to share power with one single stranger out there. And the whole time you own the phone and you're going to feel like, damn, I wasted my money on that bullshit. You're not going to share with nobody. What you're going to do is if you're at the bar drinking and you got your little uh, whatever it is, uh, portable charger, whatever, or your charger, your regular charger, you're going to ask the bartender, hey, can you plug this in for a little bit? I need to get my charge back. That's what's going to happen. That's reality. You know, if you want to talk about sharing things, people share electricity. If you're at the bar and you're the owner of the bar, they're going to share electricity. Sometimes they'll act funny and be like, nah, all my plugs are full. But most of the time, they're going to take your phone, go plug it up by the wall and charge your phone. And I don't really get it because nowadays, like everybody, I pour, you know what they should have came up with? They should have came up with a, a backup battery inside your phone. Now, that would be cool as hell. You know what I'm saying? Like you have one battery and then you got a backup battery. So, like, say, for instance, you ever go down, all the way down, and just bloop, switches power over to the backup battery. You know what I'm saying? Then you got a whole another battery. So, when you charge it up, you charge up two batteries. So, you get, like, two two power worth batteries are worth. Because, you know, I, you know that, that's what they should really come up with because people already are carrying around portable batteries all day. I carry around one in my backpack. You know, I don't have to worry about plugging my shit in. You know what I'm saying? If my shit goes low, bloop, put plug it in, and they're and they're kind of cool because like, you know, the thing that makes the portable battery cool is like you know if you play an Xbox, PlayStation, whatever, all those controllers are like a phone charger hookup, and they all need to be charged. You know what I'm saying? So you don't want to sit up there and plug up your Xbox One after your controller after you've been playing for like two or three hours, and to this little ass uh long little ass uh whatever it is a wire you know and then you have to sit right in front of the tv to finish the fucking game you know what i'm saying because you got to charge your controller a portable battery is cool because you can sit way across the room and then bloop, plug it up to your xbox one controller and you can just keep on playing the game 
You know what I'm saying? It makes it kind of convenient. I really learned that shit. I think portable batteries, I learned that shit was more better with, with the uh, Xbox One controller than with uh, the phone. Anyways, I'm, I'm rambling on for half the podcast. But I guess that's just like, uh, my, my, I talk about difference between guys and chicks and um, the uh, portable battery and the Samsung and all that shit. Galaxy. My Galaxy review, my tech review. That's that's my tech review for y'all. All right, man. I've been working on beats still. It's April 20th. Like I said, 420, 420. Get out there and get your smoke on if you're a smoker. And uh, sh- that's all that's been going on. April's always kind of like a slow month, man. You got the NBA fu- uh, uh, playoffs going on, and they're so freaking predictable, man. It's it's uh, I, I'm 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 gonna stop I'm gonna stop watching them, man. It's 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 so like they sell that drama, man. It's so fucking stupid. Like they sold the drama with Patrick Beverly and, and Durant. Like, come on, man. Like he, you know, Patrick Beverly beat Durant one game. They're like, he's getting in his head, just trying to sell drama. And I'm like, for real. And then the next game, they of course, what happens? The Warriors win. Duh. You know what I'm saying? It's that easy, man. Like they sell the shit for one time to keep people to watch. I mean, everybody knows. The Warriors probably going to go to another ring and win the ring. That's why people don't even watch the NBA no more. Like, super teams like that, they make it so freaking boring. Nobody's interested. The only thing they get they get interested in is, like I said, when they try to sell the shit. Like, oh, oh, this other team has a chance to win. Just like with the uh, OKC Thunder. Come on now. Portland Trailblazers and, and, uh, and Damian Lillard. Come on now. That's a one-man team. He's doing it all by himself. Okay. That's kind of like with Rockets only had James Harden. Come on now. I mean, yeah, they're going to have a good night, and they're going to drop all these threes and this and that, and everybody be like, oh, what's going on with Thunder? Oh, man, they're falling off a cliff. They're about to go downhill. Oh, man. And then the next, you know, game they come back and beat them out the water. I mean, it's so predictable, man. This is what's going to happen. Thunder's going to win the series. Warriors going to win their series. Warriors going to go to Houston. Houston probably will lose. I'm not saying that they don't have a chance. That's the only team that probably has a chance against the Warriors because they have at least, you know, two superstars. Warriors got like, what, four or five? That's why nobody cares about the NBA. They're over here watching Game of Thrones and shit, you know? So, <laughs> Game of Thrones. Like, you know, that's really, I'm just saying, like, mainly that's like, you know, a show that's for white folks just saying <laughs> not to be black well there are some black folks that watch it you know they're into magic and stuff and 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 dragons but you know and swords but uh may, 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 mainly that's white white folks will be watching game of thrones just like big bang theory there ain't no fucking black folks watching that shit and it's fucking white folks okay <laughs> anyways okay Let's look at uh let's look look at new let's look at um the news. So that's been going on with the NBA. Nobody cares. Everybody knows what's gonna happen. Blah blah blah. But they're gonna sell you that bullshit. And then you're gonna go to work and gossip like a little schoolgirl. Cause guys like you know act like schoolgirls when it comes to sports. Like, hey man, hey. Also, you know, never gonna talk about your team when your team's winning. Like they're gonna come up and be like, "Hey, man!" Like little schoolgirls. Hey, man! I see what happened with your team. Your team down. Your team down. Ha <laughs> ha! You getting big? Da da da! Talking all this shit, and they know, and you know. I mean, you know, is she gonna win the series? You know, it's all just a, uh, you know, a mirage for drama to sell the drama. You know, you're gonna win. So, you know. I mean, get on this computer. So, I mean, you're just like, you just like listen to them like, yeah, we're going to be straight. We're going to be straight. And they're like, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't look like y'all going to be straight. I don't know. You know, try to get, you know, just to see you, you know, squirm a little bit. They want to sit up there and make you feel like heated. If you don't get heated, that pisses them off. They give up after a while. You know what I'm saying? You're like, yeah, whatever. We're going to be okay. I don't know. You know, and then, you know, this other team looking good and try to mess with you, right? And then when you do start winning, you can't even find him. You look around work, you're like, hey, where's that guy that was talking shit about my team? He's already gone. They don't even want to be around like when you're winning. All right, it's 58 degrees outside. Let's look at local news. 
New, uh, who's in charge of cleaning up homeless camps? A uh, Austin neighborhood wants answers. Well, that's kind of becoming a problem. I'm not going to lie. Because they start. Right. I'm me. Oh, hold and on a second. Let me turn this shit down. This bullshit ass. Uh, damn commercial on the on the advertisement. Ashley Hammock has lived in Western Trails neighborhood about six yard about six years. It's always been an issue, but just re recently it skyrocketed. Hammock said the homeless pop population camping underneath overpasses near Ben White and Manshaka Road. She says homeless people are coming in the neighborhood stealing items off of people's porches. Hammock says she also knows more homeless people sleeping in the neighborhood park. She says it's a safety concern for her family. Somebody needs to clean it up and provide these people with something other than downtown. Well, um, Ashley, I'm going to tell you what. There's a little church over there. I don't know the name of it. They give out all this free shit. Right next to Ben White and Shack. Free meals, free stuff. Forgot the name of the church, but that's going to attract homeless people. So mostly they go over there, they ride the bus or whatever, they hang out next to that, that, that um, bridge and go to that church and get free food, free shit like that. Now, um, as far as the tents and stuff go and them hanging out, I'm going to tell you something, Ashley. They're fixing to develop a new transit center right up under their metro, uh, Ben White and Manshack. So all that shit going to be cleared out. But... I understand your your problem now. They're letting them camp out in like tents and make all kinds of trash up under these bridges. So I don't know what to say, man. You can't really solve the problem. I mean, hopefully, uh, I mean, hopefully, they'll, I feel sorry for them. I mean, they you know they can't work, so I don't know, man. Hopefully, they'll figure out what they can do for them because, like, you know. You, I, I I see both sides of the story. I see her, you know, she don't want her old neighborhood trashed out. And then, you know, like, you know, every time she drive by the bridge, you know, it's trash everywhere and there's tents and everything. But, uh, you know, they need a place to stay. So I don't know. I don't know how to solve that problem. I mean, I, I, I don't want to bite the head off of that because if I get too mean, people are going to sit up there. Why the hell you say this on the podcast? Anyways, that's the local news. Let's look at hip hop news. There's really nothing going on in hip hop, man. Hey, I'm gonna tell that all y'all, man. Sometimes I'll be on this computer and I'll be thinking of these albums and they're actually mixtapes. Now you gotta be careful with that because like, you can go buy an album and you can probably get it on that Piff or a uh, live mixtape for free, but you don't even realize it until after you've been bought the album. But it's okay. I mean, you, uh, oh, here we go on April 18th. This is some new no news from hip hop. Sorry. I'm just saying, make sure you check the mixtape website before you go buy an album because you, you might be wasting your money. But of course, rap artists are not going to like what I just said, but I said it. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, this is the news for hip hop. On April 18th, Cypress Hill received a star in the Walk of Fame, making them, making them the first Latino group to re receive a star in the walk of fame so they made history stone is a way of the walk <laughs> i'm sorry cypress hill what is it i just killed a man here is something you can't understand how can i just kill a man <laughs> it was pretty wild man back in the day that's that's why cypress hill and prisons i know is pretty bad Okay, and they was always plexing. I think they plexed. They had like a little beef with Ice Cube over one of the songs or something. It, was, it goes way back. Album releases. Well, April 26th, Twista, Generation Nightmare. Don't know that dude. School, Schooly Boy Q, Crash Talk. I heard like one of his song, one of his CDs. Didn't like none of it. Mad Child Demons. Don't know that dude. Pete Rock, Return of SP1, I mean SP1200. I don't know none of them. Those are to be announced, so I don't even know if they're going to re be released in, in, in April. Pete Rock or whatever. But the mother three that I said, Mad Child, School, Schooly Boog Q, and Twisted Twisted Dud, Twisted Dud, April 26th. So if y'all into that kind of music, go buy your album. Huh. <sighs> 
So I'm going to finish off this podcast, man. It's Trello podcast. Ah. Oh, man, 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 man. This, look here. What y'all need to prepare for in life is this summer that's coming. You got one more month, the month of May, and it's already going to heat up about May 15th, May 16th. So all these bugs are going to come out. You might as well spray your house for some roaches because roaches come into the house when it's hot. More than the, just the average roach. I know it's like, you know, during the winter time, you might have to spray for roaches maybe once, twice. It's, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. It's not like it's just your whole house is covered with roaches whenever you turn the lights off. So, you know, you might have one or two roach. But come summertime, you go in there, motherfucker, all of a sudden one day, be no roaches. The next day you go in there, well, what the hell? It'll be like 30 roaches all over your counters and shit. You're like, man, this is some bullshit. You mean, hey, you can have any clean shit. You can have clean, you know, they can live off of one droplet of freaking water. One droplet. You know, you can have your whole kitchen spotless and still get roaches. So you still got to spray for that shit. And, um, of course, you, it's roaches like weed eaters. Well, I mean, weed eaters. I had the same problem like with weeds. You know, weed eaters, you got to find out what brand works. Same with roaches. Like, I went through, like, tons of brands. was researching. Like, I'll try this brand, try that. Waste all this damn money. Finally, I found me a pretty good brand. It, it kills all the roaches if I do my personal spraying. Or um, just the same thing with weed eaters. Like, you get go get this weed away, weed this and that. See, the thing I didn't find out about re- weed eaters, because I don't read the shit. I just buy it. says weed kill. I just buy the shit. And there's, like, two different kinds. There's kind of, like, some that are prevention. That means they're going to they're gonna kill future weeds that grow up. And then there's kind of some that, that kill the weed immediately. You know, and they usually kill the grass around the weed, too, when you spray them. So, I don't read the levels, of course. I just grab a weed eater. Okay, looks pretty good. Let me go ahead and stick in my basket. And some of them be, like, prevention. I'll be out there spraying the shit. Be like, damn, none of these weeds are dying. What the hell? No, it's for the new weeds coming up, dumbass. <laughs> oh, man. I was just trying to finish off this podcast, man. I got, like, two or three minutes left to get my 30-minute segment in. But, uh... Trello, let me see. Trello, still doing it. If you want to send me an email, djtrello at gmail.com. That's T-R-E-Y-L-O-W at gmail.com. If you want to check out some of my books, like I said, I got the Rectangulars and I got the Pavilion Vortex and I'm still writing. I'm still trying to finish at least one book a year or I'm trying to finish this collection of short stories right now, but I haven't really... I've been slacking off because I've been making beats and doing other shit. But once I finish that up, I'm going to, you know, go ahead and put that book out for this year. And I'm going to try to, I'm really try to write a book a year, you know, even if it's a failure or not. But I mean, both of them, Pavilion Vortex and the Rectangulars are on Amazon. All you got to do is punch in Mr. David Myers. That's my real name. I shouldn't give up my real name, but who cares? Anyways, Mr. David Myers on Amazon, and my book should pop up. I have a Kindle version for the Pavilion Vortex, if you like Kindle. And then uh, the Rectangulars, you have paperback. I hadn't switched it over to Kindle. I don't know why. I just, like, they were giving me problems when I was trying to do it, so I don't know. Uh, So that's about it, man. That's the end of the podcast. If you want to get some of my books, go on Amazon. If you want to send me an email, if you want to do any kind of interviews and shit on this podcast about hip hop or whatever you want to talk, you know, just get at me. You know, I got to, oh, shit, I keep on forgetting my freaking sponsors. Okay. And I'm never going to get paid. Ernie's, uh, Ernie's Power Wash. Is your, um, let me read this. I can't even read this. Is your sidewalk dirty? Let Ernie come spray your power, uh, your sidewalk. Man, I can't even read this. We are the best in the industry and will clean your sidewalk in half an hour, guaranteed. It will be shiny and looking new. So if your sidewalk is dirty or driveway, call Ernie. 
Ernie's Powers Wash. <laughs> that's some stupid shit, man. Nobody go. This is that's a that's a really white folk shit for for real. Ain't nobody gonna call. No. <laughs> okay, I'll shut up, man. I'm not gonna get paid for Ernie. <laughs> Hey, you know, white folks, you call it, hey, I need a power spray my driveway because uh, I got, it's kind of like dirty and shit. Oh, yeah, I'll pay you $100 to come power spray it for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. I'm out. DJ Trello. Hope y'all enjoy the podcast. Talk to y'all next week. Bye.